Peacemaker. What a joke. I must say that James Gunn has done it again. Only six months after the release of The Suicide Squad, a film I thoroughly enjoyed, Gunn is back with an HBO show which features quite the unlikely protagonist. Peacemaker, aka Christopher Smith, John Cena's big, dumb satire character from the film. He ends up making a great lead in his own right, balancing so stupid it's funny comedy with the right amount of character development that adds complexity to Peacemaker without turning him into a great big puss. Peacemaker and his sidekick Vigilante are like Beavis and Butthead or Harry and Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber. Vigilante is kind of a Deadpool parody, though I don't think Ryan Reynolds was ever given dialogue quite this funny in the Deadpool movies. Your favorite contribution to black American culture was all the black guys who fucked your mom in the ass while you watched from the closet jerking off. We also see Peacemaker getting high, doing karaoke in his underwear, and crying alone in his room. DC would never allow such an unflattering and personal view into a character like Superman or Batman. Batman doesn't kill people. Because he's a pussy! He's a dark creature of the night! Peacemaker's best friend is a really bad looking CG eagle named Eagly. The awful CG doesn't bother me too much. It actually kind of makes it even funnier. All the team members are paired off in terms of personality. The chaotic and mindless characters of Peacemaker and Vigilante are balanced out by the more down-to-earth and grounded team members Economos and Adebayo. Adebayo is the heart of the show. She always refers to Peacemaker as Chris, and her friendship with Peacemaker is a driving force in his redemption after killing the heroic Randall Flagg. John Economos is the team's hacker, a lovable loser with multiple ironic wolf shirts. Even he gets a surprisingly emotional moment in the final episode. Then there are a pair of cool and stoic hardened killers with intellect, Harcourt and the team's leader, Mern. The team's HQ is in a video store called Henenlotter Video, a playful reference to cult film director Frank Henenlotter. Peacemaker is not given any choice on joining this team, and the team members don't care much for him either, resulting in a lot of humorous conflict. There's also a running gag with this unhappy couple that Peacemaker is forced to take hostage when he's hiding from the cops. The husband is a doormat and total cuck. His wife hates that he listens to foster the people's pumped up kicks. You know that overplayed, annoyingly catchy pop song from the perspective of a school shooter? This wife is pretty based in her hatred of indie rock. She eventually ends up in a devil's triangle with Peacemaker and Vigilante. The rapid-fire, back-and-forth comedic dialogue works often. John Cena goes on a pop culture-laden rant that's really funny. Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne, Sharon Osbourne, Bill Cosby, he just got out, he's got time on his hands. Though, there are instances where the improv comedy goes on a little too long. For the soundtrack, James Gunn decided to go full-blown Monsters of Rock hair metal. It's all based on the music that the characters in the show actually listen to. In the first episode, Peacemaker is trying to escape from the cops, but he won't leave behind a bunch of records. The team all bonds over Hanoi Rocks after the usual infighting that characterizes the building a superhero team trope. There's the ironic use of the choir boys, I don't love you anymore, in the first episode when Peacemaker takes home someone from the bar who turns out to be a super-powered beast woman. Then there's the unironic use of Faster Pussycat's House of Pain during a low point in the story. The official playlist for the show is 2 hours and 41 minutes of pure 80s hair metal madness. Except some of it isn't even from the 80s, but it really has that sound. For example, the song in the opening, Do You Wanna Taste It by Wigwam, is from 2010. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't listened to most of these bands before. You'd expect it to be a lot of Poison and Quiet Riot and Scorpion and White Snake, but it actually ends up being a lot of deeper cuts. They do use a Motley Crue song, Home Sweet Home, but it's played by John Cena on the piano and it provides an unexpected tender moment. The show opens with this 
ridiculous choreographed dance scene that I love. I usually skip the opening of a show after a few episodes, but with this one, you have to watch it each episode so you can learn to do the dance along with the show, right? Wait, am I the only one doing this? Another reason this intro is so great is that it breaks the fourth wall, showing all the characters doing a dance routine that clearly exists outside of the show's storyline. Robert Patrick's character is a vile white supremacist, but it sure is fun to see him give a little pelvic thrust. Peacemaker hoisting judo master in the air leaves you going, who's that character and how will they fit into the show? Peacemaker's relationship with his father plays a large part in providing sympathy for his character as he has been abused by him his whole life. His father is also a straight up neo-Nazi. He's over the top, comically villainous. Robert Patrick is great in the role, a real highlight with his David Lynch haircut, telling John Cena that he's a simp. I hesitate giving you any helmet. He's as big a simp as you turned out to be. HBO was concerned with Gunn's decision to change the clan member comic book character of White Dragon, who actually was part of the Suicide Squad at one point, into Peacemaker's father. The Boys Season 2 experienced some backlash for what some perceived as equating the MAGA crowd with white supremacists. The Boys Season 2 had a plotline where a literal Nazi, first in the guise of a feminist and environmentalist, used social media to bring about hatred and violence. In Peacemaker, the main plot is more like the one in the Suicide Squad film, an invasion of the Body Snatchers inspired alien story. The butterflies are tiny space bugs that crawl into people's mouths, hollow out their skulls, and live there. They control and share memories with their hosts, but once they've burrowed into someone, that character is essentially dead. The butterflies feed on a thick, syrupy substance from a giant slug-like creature referred to as the cow. A swarm of butterflies end up taking over the entire police station, turning the female cop character into the main antagonist. The storyline about white supremacy is a B story, showing that Peacemaker can overcome the sins of his father, while the main plot is just a fun sci-fi concept. Because it's so similar to the not so long ago released The Suicide Squad, the main plot does feel somewhat unoriginal. Still, it's better than having the whole thing all be a social and political metaphor because that's not really what this show needs to be. Like Peacemaker himself, it's loud and stupid, but also endearing in a way. There is a political subtext in both Peacemaker and The Suicide Squad, essentially a satirical take on US foreign policy with the government and the military industrial complex using hopeless prisoners as cannon fodder in secret wars around the globe. Peacemaker's famous vow is that he will maintain peace no matter how many men, women, and children he needs to kill. And this is addressed when the team actually has to take out children that have been inhabited by butterflies. Peacemaker can't bring himself to do it. So Vigilante steps in and does it while he's cheerfully whistling because he's a complete psychopath. Peacemaker is given complexity because underneath his ridiculous looking helmet is a man conflicted about who he is and what he's been trained to do. The leader of the butterflies, Goff, suggests peace be made between the humans and the butterflies. That the butterflies are an advanced race that is working to improve the planet by taking over humans. He chooses for the planet to remain sovereign, and even though it could be a detriment to the planet, it's a choice of freedom over comfort. Eh, close enough. It also means his character has grown, yet he's still the same killer as before. He hasn't changed so much that he doesn't resemble himself anymore. There are some major reveals with the characters of Mern and Adebayo. It turns out Mern has been taken over by a renegade butterfly who is working against the Horde. When Mern is killed, Harcourt becomes the new team leader, which 
makes the most sense because Peacemaker is not team leader material. At least not yet. There is a second season planned. Adebayo is actually Amanda Waller's daughter, which is revealed to the audience early on, but to the rest of the team later. Because the deep state agent Amanda Waller is such a ruthless and despised character in DC lore, Adebayo has to listen to people talk shit about her mom and just ignore it. She might not have her mother's willpower, but she is more compassionate and inverse of her mother. The reoccurring character of Judo Master, who is working with the butterflies, provides excellent action comedy. He's always eating a bag of junk food, and the size difference between him and John Cena makes for some unique fight scenes. Then there's the scene where Economos runs into Judo Master with a car and beats him up with a crowbar. There's a running gag the whole season about how Economos dyes his beard, and it causes a lot of conflict between Peacemaker and Economos because Peacemaker's always giving him a hard time for it, and he keeps claiming that he doesn't dye his beard. So in the last episode, Economos is having to pretend that he's been taken over by a butterfly, so he has to pretend like he's this emotionless creature that's taken over the human body. And one of the other butterflies asks him, why do you dye your beard? And in that moment, he has to admit that he actually does dye his beard and all the teams listening in. And it's this surprisingly sad kind of moment about how pathetic his life is. And I don't know, I, I thought it was really effective. The shootout at the barn in the final episode did feel kind of cheap, especially compared to the ending of the Suicide Squad film. There probably was a rush to get this show out to keep up momentum, as James Gunn has a lot of future plans in the works. This is a television show, so I do have to temper my expectations, but they use the same song that they use in the intro during this scene. They really could have picked another song. Was I just critical of a James Gunn soundtrack decision? Wow. First time for everything, I guess. I don't think Peacemaker hits quite as hard as The Suicide Squad, but I'll go 7 out of 10 because it has some of the freshest writing I've seen in a comic book show, the soundtrack is very apropos, it gets you pumped up for the next episode, and it all goes by quick with 8 episodes all under an hour. Plus, a man chainsaws a gorilla to death. I had just said how much I wanted to kill someone with a chainsaw like 50 minutes earlier. All this being said, John Cena couldn't help but post a tweet using the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which is a horrible situation that is bad for the whole world, to promote the show Peacemaker with a hashtag. It still doesn't achieve the maximum cringe of the If I Were Putin's Mommy video. Perhaps you would hold dear human life, and on this night, instead of Mother Russia, you would call me. Mm -hmm.